Hello and welcome everyone to your Radical Reboot Summit, how to reset your life through Ayurveda, authentic power and self-love. I'm your host for the summit, Robin Lynch. And as an Ayurvedic practitioner and wellness strategist, I help women who are stuck and seeking change to access the right tools to maximise their own vibrant health and through that to create a life that's abundant, fulfilled and joyful. But what I'm most passionate about and what this summit is really about is creating authentic personal wellness in all areas of your life and through that to live a life of true freedom. I'm so excited to be welcoming today our guest, our guest expert, Margaret Paul. Margaret, it's wonderful to have you here. Uh, Margaret is an author, a best-selling author and an inner bonding facilitator. She has put together this work of the inner bonding process and through that has been changing people's lives significantly for many, many years. So I'd like to introduce her to you a little more just by reading her bio to you. So Dr. Margaret Paul is a best-selling author, a relationship expert, a popular HuffPost and Mind Body Green writer, and co-creator of the powerful inner bonding self-healing process, recommended by actress Lindsay Wagner and singer Alanis Morissette. She has appeared on numerous radio and television shows, including Oprah. Her book titles include, Do I Have to Give Up Me to Be Loved by You? Do I Have to Give Up Me to Be Loved by God? Healing Your Aloneness, Inner Bonding, and the recently released, and we're going to talk about it later, Diet for Divine Connection. Margaret has successfully worked with thousands around the world and taught classes and seminars for <clears throat> over 50 years, which means mm -hmm. she started when she was five. <laughs> I am sure. <laughs> um, Margaret, welcome, welcome. It's so lovely to have you here today. Thank you so much, Robin. I'm looking forward to this. Mm, so am I. So, you know, Margaret, I have to say you are a true example of living in authentic personal wellness on all levels of your life. Um, you know, you absolutely are beaming with that radiance and, you know, all the work you do, you certainly cannot do that without having authentic personal wellness. So you're perfect for this summit and um, what we're talking about. So our interview title is How to Love Yourself and Define Your Self-Worth. So Margaret, you've been teaching the inner bonding process for many years. Mm -hmm. Would you share with us how this process came about for you and why it would be relevant for all of us. Yeah, so, you know, let me start uh, kind of a long time ago mm -hmm. um, and, and relate it to my new book because how inner bonding started and how the book started are very much related. So I was, I was a sickly child mm -hmm. and I hated being sick and I was sick in my early 20s and that's when I started to do research on how to have health. And fortunately, I learned how to do that. There was one little health food store in Los Angeles, and I started to shop there and, and just eat organic, healthy food. And uh, I got better. But I, I got better physically, but emotionally, there was a lot going on. I, I was not a happy child. I was not a happy young woman. And I went to a lot of different therapies to try and heal anxiety and some depression. And I became a therapist and I worked for 17 years as a traditional therapist, but I was not happy at all with the results. And sometime during that time, um, after going to so many different forms of therapy, um, I started reading about spirituality and I, I figured I've got to learn about this. And I started having some brief moments of of connectedness that were wonderful, but I had no idea how to have this at will. Mm -hmm. Anyway, after 17 years, I realized that there's no real healing without a spiritual connection. And I, I started to ask for something to come in, a process to come in that would be really deeply healing for people uh, much more rapidly than most therapy, where they wouldn't always have to come in to see the therapist. That's when I met Dr. Erica Chopich. She had half the, half the inner bonding process. I had the other half. So of course we had to meet, which we did, and we started to evolve the inner bonding process. Now, <clears throat> earlier before that, I had been really trying to have this at will spiritual connection, but I just couldn't have it. Now, the basis of inner bonding is about intention. 
and that there's only two intentions at any given moment. And one is the intention to protect against painful feelings with some form of controlling behavior. Mm -hmm. And the other is to open to learning about what's loving to you so that you can share your love with others. And I had realized before all this that accessing spirit was about frequency, like how high you could raise your frequency. And I, but I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know what was keeping my frequency down. Well, as I learned about intention and I started to be able to choose the intention to learn to love myself, all of a sudden I started to experience this at will connection. I, I started to access my divine guidance. So I thought, wow, this is amazing. I thought it was about the intention to learn about loving myself. And I thought, oh, if I only teach my clients this, then they'll be able to have this access that was so easy for me at that point. But it didn't work out that way. And I started to realize over time, it took me time to connect the dots, that frequency was both about the body and what you put in your body and about your thinking and how you treat yourself and whether you're loving yourself or whether you're abandoning and rejecting yourself. And so that's when the idea for this, this book, Diet for Divine Connection, Beyond Junk Foods and Junk Thoughts to At Will Spiritual Connection. That's when I got the idea. That's when I realized, okay, people have to know this. They have to know that they can connect, that they don't always have to go to experts. They don't have to have a guru. They can become their own guru by learning to have a high frequency through clean eating and through the kind of thinking that's loving to themselves rather than self-abandoning. Mm. And that's how it all came about. Wow, that's, that's really fabulous. So there are, there are six steps in the inner bonding process. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And is it important to, to, to get... Um, to work through those six steps, that's mm -hmm. part of what you're doing now, isn't it? So we need to have those as well as, right. as, well as this other mm -hmm. awareness. Or does that help us with this other awareness of the diet? No, no. The six steps are, um, are absolutely essential. Okay. They're, they're what create. See, most people, we've had, you know, most people have had hard, hard childhoods. And, yep. and we had to protect against the pain because we didn't know how to manage it. Mm -hmm. And so we developed uh, in our lower brain sort of these um, automatic responses to protect against pain. Mm -hmm. But the problem is so many of our responses create our pain. Yeah, right. So for example, we learned to abandon ourselves in basically four ways. One is we stay up in our head because when we were little, we, we couldn't stay in our body. We couldn't feel the pain and survive. So we had to go up in our head. But being in your head means you're disconnected from your feelings. Mm -hmm. So you're abandoning your feelings. You're not getting all the fantastic information that your feelings have for you. And so that's one form of self-abandonment. Another is we learn to judge ourselves. Mm -hmm. we, we tell ourselves we're not good enough, we're not worthy, that, that you know, unless somebody else likes us, we're not okay. We can control how people feel about us by being perfect. We have to do everything right. I mean, there's so many false beliefs that make us feel very bad, very rejected inside. And then we've learned to turn to a lot of addictions. Yeah. You know, people turn to food, alcohol, drugs. They turn to the internet, to their iPhone, to Facebook, to sex, to pornography, to gambling, to spending, to shopping. I mean, there's a million ways mm. that people avoid their feelings. So they get a feeling and instead of embracing it and learning from it, they do everything they can to avoid it. And that's a third form of self-abandonment. And then finally, many people have learned to um, hand their feelings over to somebody else. Like, um, I'm not going to be okay unless you love me. Mm -hmm. And so then I have to try and have control over how you feel about me. And all of that is a part of self-abandonment. Mm -hmm. So we've learned these ways to abandon ourselves. And in order to heal that, we need to see the, the six steps of inner bonding are a roadmap yeah. to heal the beliefs, 
to heal the fears, to heal the, this, this part in our lower brain where all the false beliefs are housed. It's a way to create new neural pathways in our higher brain for what we call the loving adult. Mm -hmm. And the loving adult is, is, is who we are when we can really love ourselves and take care of ourselves. So the steps of inner bonding, very simply, I mean, they're very right. in-depth, but simply, <laughs> yeah. The, the first step is the willingness to feel your pain and not, not run away from it. If you're going to run from it, you're not going to be in step one of inner bonding mm -hmm. and that you make a decision you want responsibility for it. Now, let me say there's two kinds of pain. There's the pain that we cause um, with our self-abandonment. That's anxiety, depression, guilt, shame, anger, aloneness, emptiness, jealousy. Mm -hmm. um, are, are some of the things, you know, that's, we cause those feelings. Yeah. Either by how we're treating ourselves, how we're feeding ourselves, all the ways we abandon ourselves, both physically and emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, so then there's the feelings of life, the painful feelings of life. You lose somebody you love, you're going to have grief. Yeah. Somebody's treating you badly, you're going to have heartbreak. Um, you're going to feel helpless over them for how they're treating themselves or how they're treating you. Uh, you want to connect to somebody and that nobody's there, you're going to feel lonely. So those feelings we're not causing, mm -hmm. but we still have to learn to manage them mm -hmm. because those are the feelings we actually ran from the most as we were growing up because we couldn't manage them. Mm -hmm. And so we learned all the ways to protect ourselves that are now causing all the wounded feelings. So mm -hmm. step one, we have to be willing to feel all of our painful feelings, learn from them, and make a decision that we want responsibility for them. Mm -hmm. Step two, we move into our heart. We consciously open to learning about loving ourselves, about our false beliefs, about what's in our highest good. And we invite our higher self in. We invite in compassion, mm -hmm. kindness, gentleness. And we teach people how to do this, how to access that higher wisdom and higher love. That's what creates the loving adult. When we're open to learning and we're connected to our higher guidance, we're operating as the loving adult. Yeah. And then, pardon me? That's good. Yep, yep, got that. Yeah. So step one, okay. step two. Yep. Yeah, that's step two. And then in step three, we're dialoguing with our feelings and we're, we're asking, um, how am I treating you? What am I telling you? What am I doing or not doing that's causing these wounded feelings of anxiety, depression, guilt, shame, and so on. And once we understand what we're doing and how we're treating ourselves, we go a little deeper into what, to why am I doing this? What are the beliefs, mm. the false beliefs that are causing us to treat ourselves in these ways, to put pressure on ourselves, to tell ourselves <clears throat> that we have to be perfect, we have to do everything right, that we're unworthy, we're unlovable, we're not good enough. Where do we get these? Yeah. And why do we keep treating ourselves in these ways? So much mm -hmm. of that, Margaret, isn't there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so, so much of it. Yes. And it's so sad. It makes people feel so bad. And so mm. once we understand what we're doing and why we're doing it, mm. then step four, we go back to our higher guidance. Right. And we're asking two questions. What is the truth yeah. about any of the false beliefs? And what is in my highest good? What is the loving action towards myself? Okay. And we access that. You see, it's so important to be able to access. So that's that. the bit then that you were going, this is the bit that people aren't getting. So they, yeah, they right. couldn't access. So they could do the first three steps and they could figure out all of mm -hmm. that, you know, <laughs> what I'm going through and, you know, accept all that or, you know, try and access all that. But then they couldn't get, what do I do next? Yeah, they can't get the connection. They don't know how to connect mm -hmm. because their frequency is too low because mm -hmm. of junk foods and junk thoughts. And I suppose then too, what happens, Margaret, is they get influenced by everything else around them. Instead That's of right. the answer coming from, from within, from that divine mm -hmm. source, it comes from all the external. And so they end up probably going back through the same loop. Yeah, they go back through the same loop. And because they can't access their divine source, mm -hmm. they can't define their own worth. Mm -hmm. And this is essential to being able to love ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to go to our higher guidance and see through the eyes of love who we are mm -hmm. in, our, in our soul, who yeah. we really are, what our passion is, what our purpose is, what's wonderful, what our gifts are. Mm -hmm. Most people have no idea what that is. 
which is why they keep saying, well, somebody else has to like me or see me or love me for me to be okay, because they can't access that truth. Mm, 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 this is so important. So important to be able to raise your frequency high enough to access this truth. And so on step four, that's what we're doing. We're going to our higher guidance for truth Mm -hmm. and loving action. Mm -hmm. In step five, we take the action, whatever it is we're we're directed to take. And then in step six, we go back inside to see how are we feeling as a result of taking a loving action on our own behalf. Mm -hmm. And if we've indeed taken a loving action, we will feel a deep sense of relief. We will feel lighter. We will feel a healing of anxiety, depression, anger, guilt, shame, all these hard feelings Mm -hmm. that we have. We're going to notice that, wow, I feel so much better right now. Mm -hmm. And so these six steps are a roadmap to learning to love yourself. It's the workout for developing the loving adult self, developing these new neural pathways in our higher brain. But wow. you can see that it's so, it's so tied in. You see, the, the first part of this book is yeah. all about the food. It's yeah. all about how people are eating that's keeping their frequency too low. Mm-hmm. And the second part is inner bonding. Mm-hmm. And the, even if people know how to eat well, yeah. if they're not loving themselves, they're not going to be motivated to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to be resistant They're going to be trying to eat well on willpower, which doesn't work. Yeah, and for another reason, not not for this um, self-worth and self-love and and living for their highest good. So they're going to be doing it for external reasons rather than this this really deep-seated loving adult, you know, um, that we're actually trying to get to. That's right. Yeah. Um, Actually, the, the new book, Margaret, has the first... In part one, um, is titled "Divine Connection: Emotional and Physical Healing Through a Transformational Food and Thought mm-hmm. Diet." I thought that was amazing. I thought, you know, emotional and physical healing. So it's not just about you know everyone's eating for you know they're eating proteins and they're eating you know different diets and things just to be healthy or to you know to to have look better, lose weight. Lots of people for that, but this is for emotional and physical healing. Um, and it's not just also the food, it's also thought. Right. So could you explain, because a lot of people are, are changing their diet and they're really trying to do well on their diets. What problems are our current diets making for us, Margaret? So why, you know, why is it a problem what we're doing? Well, I mean, you know, a lot of people know what's going on with the food, that uh, so much of it is um, it's factory farmed. It's got hormones. It's got antibiotics. It's got you know, p- pesticides and grain for cattle, which they can't absorb, and changes the fat for people who eat meat. And then the, the produce is, is sprayed with pesticides, and, and the soil is depleted. And, you know, and so regardless of whether people are eating vegan or Ayurvedic or, or, or vegetarian or paleo, if they're not eating clean, mm. then they're not going to have a high enough frequency. Mm. And one of the problems is, is that we're not all the same. Mm. And, you know, everybody needs to eat according to what works for them, but they don't know what works for them. And so they go to an expert and expert says, yeah, well, you have to eat this way or that way. But I mean, and that's what I did for years Yeah. and it didn't work. Yeah. And it wasn't until I learned to get connected yeah. with my feelings and my guidance mm-hmm. that I was able to tune into the way of eating that works for my particular body. Mm. And, I, I, and I never say this is the way to eat because yeah. I don't know what's true for anybody else. Absolutely. So then the more that we can become attuned to um, the natural rhythm of everything, Margaret. Right, right. Yeah. So, and, and eating foods, obviously, that are in that natural rhythm and right. you know, is going to create that openness and that alignment that we're looking for. Thoughts just as important, Margaret, as food. So, well, oh, yeah, because yeah. just as important. Because if you're rejecting yourself in all of these 
uh, four ways that I mentioned, Mm -hmm. self-abandoning, you're creating anxiety, depression, Mm -hmm. guilt, shame. Your your frequency is very low Mm -hmm. when you're judging yourself, when you're you're ignoring your feelings, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, doing any of these ways of abandoning. Now, you know, recent research shows that anxiety and depression can also be caused by this um, imbalance in the gut microbiome. When you eat um, the, the factory farm foods and you take drugs and you eat foods with pesticides, you're destroying um, the beneficial bacteria, and especially with antibiotics and other drugs. Mm-hmm. And that bacteria ends up being very toxic. Mm-hmm. Goes right up to the brain. Just like when you drink alcohol, it goes right up to the brain. The yeah. toxicity in the gut goes right up to the brain, causes anxiety and depression. Yeah. So does self-abandonment. Yeah. You yeah. see, so they're all tied in. We're mind, body, spirit. We're not separate. I was actually going to just say, ask that, Margaret. So you also talk about in chapter six, the gut, brain, spirit connection. Right. So that's what you're talking about there? I am talking about that, where yeah. if we're eating badly and our gut is very out of balance, mm-hmm. and then we're creating toxicity in the brain, we can't raise our frequency high enough to connect with our guidance. There's yeah. no way. Yeah. There's no way when your brain is toxic, when you're anxious and depressed from the toxicity. Plus, that toxicity uh, creates holes in the gut. You know, it, it's that, it's that, uh, it's called dysbiosis. Um, and it creates those little holes, leaky gut syndrome, mm-hmm. where that toxicity goes out into the bloodstream. It goes to the organs mm-hmm. and it's affecting them and it's creating all of these all of these degenerative diseases, the, the autoimmune diseases and the heart diseases and diabetes and, I mean, so many things, arthritis that people are suffering from. Mm-hmm. You know, I started, I started eating well in my early 20s and because I had read about it. And, and, and so I was in college at the time and my friends would laugh at me and call me this health food nut. Yeah. <laughs> and I just laughed. Because I knew, I read the books, and I knew what was going on in our food supply. I was very fortunate. Mm-hmm. And that was 56 years ago. Wow. And so, yeah, 56. So now I'm 78. I No way. Tons, <laughs> yeah, I have tons and tons and tons of energy. I almost never get sick. Yeah. And I, you know, I, my memory is fantastic. Mm-hmm. I have no arthritis at all. I have none of these things. The people that were making fun of me are either dead or they're suffering. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But it doesn't have to be. It doesn't no. have to be. Do you know- and you know what creates health is um, how you think, your yeah. state of mind, yeah. what you put in your body, yeah. and your exercise. That's the three things. I go into all of that in the book. Oh, Margaret, you know, just the fact that you've said that you're 78, everyone's going to go and buy that book right now. I hope so. I hope so. Absolutely. And, you know, the thing is, here you are, you are 78, you've been doing this for all these years, but you are still so vital and vibrant and sharing this information. So what I was going to say is that, you know, I, I love that you said you, 17 years you were going and seeing a therapist and you know or you were working with that I I was a therapist you were a therapist uh, a yeah and then therapist. yeah and then 3 years I think you were seeing a therapist is that right you Oh were, no I was seeing a therapist from the time I was like 20 all the way oh, I, I was going to all kinds of therapy I tried everything yeah. and you know what not one of those therapists ever said to me you're abandoning yourself that's why you're feeling bad because they didn't know it yeah. And you're responsible for your feelings. They yeah. never said that because they didn't know it. Yeah. It wasn't until spirit brought in inner bonding mm. that I got all of this. I mean, it came right through us. Yeah. And it's, it's been evolving ever since then. Yeah. So what I love is that, you know, you had to spend all that. Well, I don't love that you had to spend all that time doing it, yeah. but you spent all this time, but you have just given us the really quick, fast track straight there. Right. We right. don't. We are so fortunate and to have those answers right now, and just go. Okay, there it is. Take the book and go. You know, start now. So, because we have to wait for the book to come, Margaret, we have to actually order it and wait for it to come, or go to the shop and buy it. Right. Can you tell us? You do the inner bonding practice every day. 
And I'm thinking, I do. Yeah, I do. And I'm thinking mm -hmm. you do it with an awareness of your diet as well. I mean, you've told us about your diet, mm -hmm. but would you be able to describe to us how we could start? So until the book comes, what can we do to start bringing this into our lives right now? So what can we actually do? Well, one thing is people can go to the website at innerbonding.com and just take the free inner bonding course. That's, you know, everybody can do that. It's free. It'll give people the outline of inner bonding. But the first thing to start with is to start using your breath, following your breath to get yourself inside your body, not just to sit there in meditation, but to do it all day long. What you want is to start to move from just being in your head, in your mind, mm -hmm. and getting present in your body. It's one of the most important things mm -hmm. that people can learn to do. Because feelings, see, you know, our, our feelings of anxiety and depression and guilt and shame and all of these, they're letting us know that we're abandoning ourselves. Mm -hmm. And our feelings of peace and joy and fullness are letting us know that we're loving ourselves. Mm -hmm. And our feelings of loneliness and, and helplessness over others and heartbreak are letting us know that there's something we need to attend to with yeah. another person or a situation. They're all, they all have information for us. Yeah. But if we're living up here, we're not getting the information. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is just to start to drop down inside mm -hmm. and get present and move towards your feelings mm -hmm. rather than away from them. Mm -hmm. Start to notice all the ways that you're avoiding your painful feelings mm -hmm. and how much pain that causes because mm -hmm. everything we do to avoid our feelings are causing our pain. Mm -hmm. Mm. Wow. Okay. So that's some great, great starting tips for us. And the website, Margaret, is it Inner Bonding? Innerbonding.com. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Well, we can all find that. All right. So the last question, Margaret, we'll need to finish up, even though I feel like I just want to keep going and find out more because um, it just sounds so fabulous. And I really am absolutely bursting to get into this book and start reading it. But the last question is one that I ask everyone on the summit. So Margaret, if you were going to offer one tip for what we could do right now to radically reboot our lives, what would, what would that be? You know, I think it would be to start to notice um, the self-judgments mm -hmm. because this is what's debilitating for so many people that they don't realize the pressure they're putting themselves under. They don't realize how often they're telling themselves, I'm, I'm a loser, or, uh, you know, I'll never get anywhere, or uh, I'm not lovable, or I'm unworthy, or, you know, if, if only I do everything perfect, then everybody will like me, and then I'll be okay. Just start to notice what you're telling yourself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because that has a huge effect mm -hmm. on how you end up feeling. Mm -hmm. And, and so often it's just background noise, you know, it's that mind chatter and you don't realize that it's causing you to feel painful feelings. Mm. Okay, that's great advice. We can all do that. Now, Margaret has given us a wonderful free gift, an ebook called Dear God, How Can I Heal So That I May Love? And in this, in this ebook, we'll discover a profound healing process. So it was accessed through Dr. Margaret Paul's spiritual guidance, which obviously we know is so clear, um, brings clarity to, our, to the inner process of healing, the fears of intimacy, of rejection and engulfment that stand in the way of fully loving. And we're going to learn what it means to love ourselves so that we can share our love with others. So that sounds amazing, Margaret. That sounds like a great thing. Um, have you got anything to add to that? Yeah, that, that little book is... Um, it will teach people also the basics of the inner bonding process. Oh, and, right. and it's so important for relationships because if you're expecting the other person to make you happy and define you, and they're doing the same thing with you, you're going to have problems in your relationship. When you learn to love yourself, you fill up with love, and then you can share that with mm -hmm. each other. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Margaret, for your time today. This is such a powerful session to radically reboot our life by loving ourselves and knowing our self-worth. So it's been great to go deep in that. And just before we finish, I'd like to conclude with a powerful quote from your new book. So Margaret says in her book that it's when our entire being is in alignment, 
every aspect of our humanity in balance, that we can develop the higher states of consciousness people are increasingly searching for. So I think that, you know, that's something that, that we really all want to move towards is to get that highest, to, to attain those higher states of consciousness and, you know, to get that alignment, first of all, we're, we're just, um, you know, we get pushed out so quickly. So it's so true, isn't it? So yeah. thank you again, Margaret. And, and I'm so excited about your book. Um, do you want to hold it up one more time? Yes, I'd be happy to. Yep. So um, Diet for Divine Connection. So, you know, I think that um, we're all going to want to go out and get that. I know I am. And um, I'm, I'm going to start it. As soon as this summit is finished, I'm absolutely onto that book. I'm really looking Great. forward. So thank you again, Margaret, for your time. And thank you to our community for being with us today and sharing this. And may all of you now be able to take one step closer to radically rebooting your life. Thank, Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Margaret.